I want to start this story off on the serious note that stealing is bad. And people who steal from individuals, community members, and local organizations are absolutely abhorrent and should not be seen as anything other than disgusting assholes. I was hesitant to tell this tale for several reasons. First being that many of the details have never been discussed with anyone but the other people involved. And so I was worried about potentially incriminating myself for past crimes. The other reason for my hesitation was because I have quite a large viewer audience, many of which are young, edgy, and impressionable, and may somehow think that it's cool to steal, which it absolutely is not. But hesitations aside, today I'll be telling you the story of how I was once a disgusting, thieving dickhead who with the help of three others nearly succeeded in pulling off the greatest heist of all time. This is the story of the stolen slushy machine. Now before I begin, I gotta say that this video has been broken down into three parts. The first part is another entire incriminating story detailing the events leading up to this one. But because I was never caught for the crimes, I don't want to make it entirely public. So I'll be releasing that portion of the story on my Patreon. And I tell you what, it's a very juicy story. So if you're considering becoming a patron to hear it, you will not be disappointed. But as for the story I'll be telling today, consider it part two, the sequel of my time dabbling in juvenile crime. All specific locations and people's names have been changed to protect their privacy, but everything else in the story is true to the best of my memory. You see, this story takes place 10 years ago, just a few days before Christmas, when I was an angsty 16-year-old living in a small, single streetlight town out in the country. There weren't too many other kids around my age, so I had to make friends with the few that there were, mainly two other boys. Let's call them Elliot and Roger. Elliot, who was my best friend at the time, lived about a mile away from me, just past the local elementary school and community sports fields. So every time that me, Elliot, and Roger walked to Elliot's house, we would cut through the sports fields and sometimes stop to hang out at a concession stand that was in between the fields. This concession stand was a brick building with a few picnic tables, public bathrooms, water fountains, and when it was open, a small shop counter where you could purchase snacks and beverages. Well, one day, while hanging out there, Elliot's criminal mind got to thinking, if we could somehow break into that concession stand, then we could take all of the snacks and refreshments for ourselves and live like kings all summer long with a never-ending supply of Gatorade, Sour Straws, Peanuts, Skittles, and God willing, Beef Jerky. Well, I gotta tell you, the idea of living like a king was certainly enough to convince Roger and myself to join in on his thieving plot. And so it was decided. Two days before Christmas, in the dead of night, we would go to the concession stand and find a way to break in. Now, the fact that we had no idea how we were going to do it should have been a sign to turn back. But determination and greed is an intoxicating drug. And as it turns out, I owned a hatchet. And Elliot had brute strength. And Roger? Well, Roger was good at looking out or whatever. So 11 at night came around, and the three of us made our way to the stand. The transaction counter was closed off and blocked by thick metal sheeting, and the only other entry was a metal door on the side of the building, which, after a swift chop with the hatchet cutting through the door's metal, ended up being our way in. Now at this time, I didn't know how to pick a lock, and that knowledge certainly would have saved us much time and grief. But as it stood, we would use brute force and hack away at the door around the deadbolt lock until we could pull the lock out and break in. And so that's exactly what we did. Elliot, being the strongest, took first shift of chopping, hacking, hacking, and hacking away at this door, slowly but surely making progress. Slowly being the key word, because it turns out a hatchet isn't near as effective on metal as it is on wood. So after we all took our share of hatchet duty, a good hour had gone by. But finally, and with much relief, we were able to pull the deadbolt lock out of the door, and exhausted, we pushed it open, awaiting to see the glorious prize on the other side. Well, what we saw was not piles of candy and soda, but instead a small administration office and another metal door which certainly led to the product storage. Fuck! The three of us exclaimed in unison, and fuck indeed. Desperately, we searched the office for a key to the second door, but no key was found, leaving us with two choices. Either we take even more dangerous time to hack through the second door and risk a cop spotting the break-in, or we call it quits and take the opportunity to leave. Roger and me both agreed to just call it quits. It was far too much work getting through the first door. And besides, there was a keg party happening on the other side of town and we wanted to get drunk. 
But Elliot, full of blind stubbornness, had not gotten this far to give up. Well, the three of us got in a heated argument over what to do, but eventually we decided to just leave and go to the party. We had failed. At this point, another character is introduced to the story. We'll call him Teeny because he was freakishly tall and enormously fat. Well, Teeny had borrowed his mom's minivan and had met with us at Elliot's house to drive us to the keg party. On the drive to the party, Elliot wouldn't stop muttering to himself about wanting to go back and finish the job, which of course clued to Teeny that there was something that us three were in on that he was not, and not being a part of things was something that Teeny wouldn't stand for. So after pestering us with questions about what we had been doing, and us refusing to tell him, he finally stopped the car and said, I'm not driving a single foot closer to this party until you let me in on the big secret. And that was how Teeny joined our petty band of thieves. Well, we continued to the party and proceeded to get pretty tipsy. I was having a good time, but Elliot just couldn't let it go about wanting to go back to the concession stand and finish the job that we had started. And after a few more drinks, my critical thinking skills faded away, and I started considering that maybe Elliot was right. Maybe we should go back. Roger and our newest crime companion, Teeny, were already on board with the idea, which pretty much settled it. We would return to the concession stand to hack through the second door and steal the food and drinks inside. And this time, we had Teeny's mom's minivan as a getaway car. Soon after, we found ourselves back at the scene of the crime. Teeny had parked the van past the fields in an empty lot and was posted as lookout. He would flash his lights if he saw someone coming to investigate the break-in. Me, Elliot, and Roger were already through the first hack door in the admin's office and were taking turns hatcheting our way through the second metal door. By this point, my hatchet looked like it had been through an industrial scrap shredder, but we were making good progress, and with our bodies fueled with alcohol, we eventually hacked out the deadbolt lock on the second door. Finally, the moment of truth. Anxiety and adrenaline high, we pushed open the second door and crept into where the loot was stored. Oh, and to our glorious disappointment, the room was empty. No crates of Sprite and Gatorade. No sour straws, Skittles, or peanuts. No fucking warheads. And worst of all, no beef jerky. Nothing. Nothing but a single dollar bill in the register, laughing at us as a big fuck you. And of course, a slushy machine. Now when I say slushy machine, I don't mean one of these tabletop models, small and sleek, looking like an oversized blender. This slushy machine was a monster. This was the industry sized model, standing taller than my head with heavy duty metal casing and weighing almost as much as Teeny himself. And this hulking monolith seemed to stare down at us as we searched the room for anything we could steal and coming up empty handed. Fuck! The three of us once again exclaimed in unison. Now what the fuck do we do? I mean, what could we do? We had spent hours hacking through metal doors with a hatchet, only to find that it was all for nothing. Let's get out of here, Roger cried. I agree, I agreed. No, exclaimed Elliot. I could see through the frustration on his face that the gears of criminality were once again turning in his head. We didn't come this far to leave empty-handed. But we have the dollar from the register, Roger stupidly squeaked. Go get Teeny, Elliot continued. We're taking the slushy machine. Let me interrupt myself for a moment to give you a little bit of context to aid you in understanding the rest of the story. The house where I lived at at this time had a concrete tool shed in the yard. And this shed was where me and all my friends would go to party and hang out. It was our clubhouse, our home away from home, and was currently serving as our headquarters. So when Elliot said, we're taking the slushy machine, I knew he wasn't talking about taking it to his house. He was talking about taking it to my tool shed. And while the prospect of having a bulking piece of unexplainable stolen machinery in my shed set off alarm bells in my mind, those alarm bells were quickly overpowered by the same prospect of having a badass slushy machine in our clubhouse. I mean, all the syrup flavor mixers were in bottles right next to the machine. So in theory, we could throw raging slushy machine parties every night for a month if we wanted to. And so once again, good judgment was blinded by greed. Let's do it, I said, just as Teeny arrived at the concession stand in a pant after having waddled across the length of the field that separated us from the getaway van. And so all four of us grabbed a corner of the behemoth refreshment maker, turning it on its side for easy carry. Even with four people, our cargo was quite the weight to bear. And for a gang of marauders trying to remain inconspicuous in the midst of a crime, we would have stuck out like a sore thumb to anyone who might have been in the area and happened to glance in our direction as we slowly hefted this enormous slushy machine across the long empty soccer field, fully illuminated by the moonlight. 
Well, after what seemed like ages, we finally managed to tote the machine to Teenie's mom's van and hoisted it clumsily in through the back hatch door. But now a new problem had arisen. The slushy machine was far too large to fully fit in the van, rendering the hatchback unable to close, meaning that three of us would have to ride in the back and hold on to the machine so it didn't slide out the open back door, all while remaining inconspicuous as we drove through the town's main intersection without anyone noticing our clearly suspicious and illegal activity. Even though we lived in a small town, and the time now being somewhere between 1 to 2 in the morning, the area that we'd be driving past in order to get to my shed was usually somewhat busy due to a 24-hour gas station on the corner, which also promotes 24-hour sale of alcohol. So there was a definite risk of being spotted by a store clerk, drunken patron, someone filling up their gas tank, or worse, a patrolling police cruiser. But fuck it, we made it this far, and being young and stupid as we were, it was a risk that we were willing to take. So slowly and cautiously, Teeny drove us and our loot through town, as me, Ellie, and Roger held onto the slushy machine for dear life, lest it slide out of the van and directly into the middle of Main Street. But luckily within no time and without complication, we managed to reach our destination, our active headquarters, my tool shed. Quickly, we unloaded the slushy machine and plugged it into one of two of the shed's working power outlets and excitedly filled the machine with ice and slushy mix. For this was the moment of great reward after a long, grueling night of deviant behavior. It was going to be slushies and high fives all around. But of course, this night, consisting of non-stop failures, had one more in store for us. As we turned the machine on, nothing happened. We were probably expecting to hear some sort of mechanical sound, like you might hear when you plug in a refrigerator, or a light beginning to glow, signifying that the machine was ready for operation. But no such indications occurred. It just sat there, silently like a long dead metal giant. Now it should be said that none of us had any experience hooking up and operating industrial sized slushy machines, but after frantically searching the machine's components for any overlooked switches or unplugged cables, we found nothing seemingly out of place. And the cold realization was beginning to creep over the four of us, that our once thought grand prize was just a broken piece of shit, that we had risked our necks and spilled our sweat for nothing more than 300 pounds of scrap metal. All of our fantasies of slushy parties and refreshing ice beverages whenever we wanted it were all melting away faster than the ice in the machine was now melting onto the shed's concrete floor. It was as if we were Mexican bandits who after having kidnapped a fat American tourist came to find that our hostage had no living family or friends who could pay the requested ransom. And so there we all stood in silent contemplation and frustration, doing our best to contain our anger, which could not honestly be directed at anyone but ourselves for our eager stupidity and teenage angst. The night had started with three of us, continued with four, and ended with the addition of a fifth and useless member of our troop. Well, gloomily, Elliot, Roger, Teeny, and myself all agreed that it would be best if we split up for the night and head our separate ways. We were all developing hangovers and were far too tired to figure out what to do next. So one by one, the three of them left for home, leaving me alone, in the shed, with a dead slushy machine. And while that concludes the events which occurred on the night that we enacted our heist, this story is far from over. For in towns as small as ours, word spreads fast when crimes occur. And by the time that our high school's Christmas break had reached its end, the four of us would become the prime suspects in the robbery. And shortly after that, all four of us would be heading to jail. But that story will be told in the next video, part three of the Slushy Machine Saga. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And remember, part one of this story, which details all the crazy events leading up to why we decided to rob the concession stand, will be available exclusively on my Patreon, to patrons who contribute one dollar or more a month. It's pretty much the prequel to this tale, and since it contains incriminating material that I've never talked about to anyone before, I couldn't make it public on YouTube. So be sure to join me on Patreon and check that out. I hope you all enjoyed this part of the Slushy Machine Saga. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for more videos. And remember, stealing is a shitty thing to do, and crime does not pay off. But I tell you what does pay off, 
and that's a membership to audible.com, which I truly, truly personally enjoy. They have over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. And for someone like me who loves listening to audiobooks, it satisfies my soul. So I proudly offer my affiliate link to you listeners. Visit audibletrial.com slash rusty for a free 30-day trial plus one free audiobook of your choice. I'm currently getting my crime fix by listening to Manhunter, which is the real-life FBI agent's account of hunting down and interviewing the most depraved serial killers, and also the basis of the Netflix original series of the same name. I highly recommend it. And so again, for your free 30-day trial and audiobook of your choice, go through my link in the description of this video, audibletrial.com slash rusty, and see what kind of audiobooks they have to offer you. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned.